Okay, I think we've got everybody here. We will reconvene our meeting and we started down at the alumni uh, room. Uh, I want to publicly thank those folks, the alumni board, for inviting us down. It was a uh, great tour. Uh, good to see the work that they've done down there and hope to work together with them in the future. So, uh, I'm going to start by reading the uh, mission statement. The mission of USD 388 is to provide the highest quality education in a safe, supportive environment, empowering all students to be self-sufficient learners, enabling them to meet the challenges of the 21st century. Join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. point out on the curriculum report, um, Kyle from uh, Special Ed Co-op was, he's actually in Russell, and I'm not in Russell, in Victoria and in, in, uh, La Crosse tonight. He's going to join us next month to talk more about the possibility of uh, Russell joining the Co-op. At first I thought he was going to be our curriculum corner, but then he can't get it arranged to be all the different communities, so he's going to come to ours next month. Okay, real quick on my report, budget update, uh, expense reports are there, revenue reports are there. Now, looking at our cash summer report this year compared to last year, uh, we're, we're setting in pretty good shape um, up uh, as far as the report's concerned. That's a, it's a little bit deceptive because of some, uh, some paper retirement we're up in that right now. It's kind of a flow through piece, so that doesn't really affect as much. Uh, and another big place that we're up capital outlay, but we have really tacked in our big capital outlay projects uh, this year. So uh, we're setting in good, in good shape. Uh, no big concerns at this time. I'll share more uh, later, though, in, in some some information. Look at what we're looking at. Really ties, ties back to budget. So, 
And then facility updates real quick. Um, all weight room roof, still working on that. Right now we've got one quote, the one quote, a little over $30,000 from Roof Masters. Um, they were not able to come up with a more economical way to fix that roof. Uh, built well, uh, way he looked at it, and after he got done looking at it, he called me and said that's just something he doesn't want to tackle. So I've also reached out to High Plains Roofing in, in the last week. They were here and got up and walked the roof and measured it. And they're going to bring me an idea on how they might be able to fix it in a quote here in the next day or two. Um, because insurance-wise, we ended up with about $9,000 in insurance. Uh, so I think Chuck and that will come out of capital out uh, in order to fix that room. But again, uh, looking for the most, you know, as I've been telling them, we, we, we have no electricity, no water in there. All it is is a storage facility. We just need a functioning solid roof on it. You know, insulation value doesn't mean anything. It, does, it just doesn't matter. We just need a, a good functioning roof on it. So that's what we're trying to find the most economical way to do that. At this point in time. Does Matt's construction class have a spring project? Yeah, that, would, that might be more than they can take on. That, that's, they have do. we talked to Matt about? I, I can talk to I can tell you that they do have a project. The problem is, is they're waiting on supplies. They actually brought the trailer back because they didn't have the supplies or waiting. They're trying they're, to finish a shed, but they're waiting so on the siding and they're going to go do the roof at the baseball field. They're, they're yeah. fixing what was torn up. They're helping fix what was torn up with the most torn up the baseball field. But that, I mean, 60 by 40, that 2,400 square feet, it's a pretty good sized project. But the, when we looked at pipelines, they got an idea of maybe the way, you know, it tore some of the brick and the block off the top of it. Of uh, taking it down to the just pulling the block and, and break it down to a level where it's still functional and then capping it there with metal um, as a way to make it more economical. So, but I haven't seen it work yet. Uh, okay, hot water check valves, they got those replaced today at the grade school. If they were bleeding back into the system, Ryan was up there today. Uh, Kind of ties right into our bond discussion this morning. We got there this morning. And Steve goes, "Hey, we have no heat. Our, our, we had one of our pumps on the boilers that was out. And the other one was kicking in and out. Uh, we did have an extra boiler or an extra, excuse me, an extra pump on hand, and they were able. To, last one came over, and were able to get switched out and get it functioning and running again. Uh, price of things. So I did get a quote because we we tried to keep one of those pumps on hand just." To Put a pump on hand. I think it was $2,250, yeah, or just the pump. Get a pump to keep it on hand for that unit. But you know, no matter what we do tonight, we're still another season through that we're going to have to be functioning with that heat. Um, so we'll probably order that pump and have it sitting on hand because again, if we, if we come in one morning and it's not working, we got to be able to switch it out quick. Happy. So, and then the remodel. Uh, we're just waiting on one more quote from one vendor. Uh, it's, it's for the flooring, and he was scheduled to come in today, but then changed it because we did have the FCCLA groups up here using it today. So in the next couple of days, he's supposed to come up and get our quote finalized for our flooring. Once we have that, we'll have our our folks in line to do the major remodel to the West bathrooms for the summer. That's all I had for uh, facility updates at this time. Okay. Comments, questions on any of those? Yeah, if not, Mr. Schmidt, you're up. We have conferences coming up on the 21st and the 23rd. These are our student-led conferences which focus on our students' individual programs and plans of study. So Mrs. Carroll is working her way with students through pre-enrollment, and so parents will sign off on classes. Other students are pre-enrolled in for next year, as well as take them through some any of the assessments they've taken on using Zello and their career interests. We had a good conversation about our IPS today. We, we know our students in seventh and eighth graders, even up till their senior year, are going to be changing what they want to do, and a lot of us even changed after that. But it's good to have them know what their skills are and 
it's very good for them to eliminate certain areas. And so sometimes parents don't hear about what a student wants to go into until the night of the conference. Sometimes students save that because they want to make sure that, that somebody is there with them. I remember at a different school, they had a student who really wanted to go to the military and didn't want to break it to his mom until the night of the conference. So I appreciate all the work Mrs. Carroll has put into that. She really arranges it well with our teachers and our students of what they need to have prepared that night. The guideline is, is the student should do 90% of the talking and we're just there to guide them. These are not the traditional types of conferences and so we're gonna push that out to our community, our parents, so they are, they're aware of that. And so that they know if they need to talk to a student's teacher about a grade or something like that, either to call, email, or arrange another time, but not on that night of conferences. And when do they start calling parents on those days? It's coming up this week, I believe. I'd like to just um, get a little update, too, about FCCLA today. Um, we hosted a star event, and we did have two students. I can only remember one of their names, so I don't want to mention them qualify for state and so it's very exciting that we were able to host that today and we're really appreciative that they could move it to our in-service day because it was originally scheduled for last week Wednesday. So it was nice. Good deal. Anything else? Nope. Okay, Mr. Becker. <coughs> um, like Donald said, uh, that Monday and Tuesday, or Monday and Wednesday of next week are our conferences uh, from five to eight. We're going back, or we're going to stay the same way that we've done in the last few years for the fourth, fifth, and sixth grade teachers at one time. Most of you know we were in the gym, but they're now in their classroom. We've got to get that little personal, you know, a little more time with the staff, uh, with the teacher and the parent. All the, uh, they schedule those times. They schedule for like a 15-minute conference. And those are already <coughs> scheduled, so the teachers have everybody uh, lined out to come um, like normal. Hopefully, we'll have over 90% again. We usually do. We have been doing a little bit of talking about not like with high school IPS, but actually having a uh, maybe a student lead a conference with their parents sometime and talk about what they do with class and stuff like that. Instead of just the parent coming in, but having the student come in with them and have that conversation together. So, um, some teachers have brought that up. I don't know whether I have to get everybody on board probably to do that or majority. So um, we're looking at that. But uh, one nice thing for us, uh, PTO supplies our meals. Course. Uh, so they have Gigi's and uh, Cappy's. So each night we'll have they supply a meal around 4:30. So we'll Any questions? Do we have yep. anything ready right for the high school? Mr. Burton's helping pay for that. We're we're going to get a little <laughs> less expensive, but we'll have meals. Good deal. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, an executive session for discussion of personnel matters with non elected personnel. Uh, been suggested 15 minutes. Anybody have any thoughts more or less than that? We will be inviting um, Mr. Burton, Ms. Schmidt, and Mr. Schindler. So I'll be looking for a motion for that along with the I'll make a motion to go into the executive session uh, to discuss individual employee evaluation for 15 minutes. Okay. Inviting uh, Ms. Schmidt, Mr. Schindler, and Mr. Burton. Second. Got a motion by Dean and a second uh, by Leticia to go into executive session to discuss individual employee evaluation pursuant to non elected personnel. And Exemption under KOMA inviting Mr. Burton, Mrs. Schmidt, and Mr. Schindler um, for 15 minutes. We will reconvene at 741. 742. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, we back on court. Yeah. I 
I so move for an executive session inviting in Mr. Shandala, Mr. Schmidt, Mr. Burton, 415 additional minutes in executive session. I'll second. So a motion by Leticia and a second by Dean for an uh, executive session for an additional 15 minutes inviting Mr. Burton, Mr. Schmidt, and Mr. Shindall. Um, all in favor? Opposed? Same sign. 15 minutes, Connie, uh, would be 858. How about 758? You're gone. Right. Back in open session. Um, we have uh, future of the month. Uh, Considerations to take up now. Um, typically, we'll go for five minutes unless somebody thinks we need more. That's what I would be looking for. Before a motion. I make a motion to go into executive session to discuss individual employee teacher of the month votes pursuant to non elected personnel exemption under KOMA, inviting Mr. Button, Mr. Schmidt, and Mr. Becker uh, for five minutes. Second. I have a motion by Jared, a second by Brian, to go to executive session to discuss individual employee teacher of the month votes. Pursuant to the non-elected personnel exemption under KOMA, inviting Mr. Burton, Mrs. Schmidt, and Mr. Becker. Five minutes, we will return at 8.06. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? <laughs> hey, you're on. Okay, back in open session. Uh, we go to the action items. First one is consideration of January Teachers of the Month. <coughs> Looking for a motion there. I'd make a motion to approve Mr. Mick for the Ellis Junior Senior High School Teacher of the Month for January and Mrs. Bird for the Washington Grade School Teacher of the Month for January. I second. We've got a motion by Brian, a second by Leticia to nominate Mr. Mick as the High School Junior High uh, Teacher of the Month and Mrs. Bird as the Grade School uh, Teacher of the Month. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. And moving on to the next uh, uh, action item is consideration of the board resolution for the uh, bond election. Okay, the, the resolution is on your agenda. This is the resolution for the, the smaller bond that we talked about. But we don't do anything simple. So, Dustin, can you hear me all right? I, I can, Corey, yes. I can, I can hear you, yes. Okay. Uh, we'll have you talk a little bit. There, there are some changes potentially, and in, in Dustin will give us an update, going on in Topeka that we need to discuss before we do this. And Dustin's with our bond Dustin's council. Dustin's with our bond council. Yes. Dustin Aiden. Welcome, Dustin. Hey, hey, thank you, man. Can you hear me okay? Well, it's a little soft. We're trying to... Committee, 
on either Friday or Monday. We would expect it to go to the Senate floor for a vote sometime next week. So that's hurdle number one. Um, hurdle number two would be is once approved by the Senate, it would then go to the House, and the House would have to go through the hearing process and the approval process. And if if through the House, then it would they would go to the governor for the signature. Um, from a financial perspective for the district, if you look at just you know five million dollars, you know four million four ninety. Um, Four million four hundred ninety thousand dollars plus interest over fifteen years. Right, that's about five point seven million dollars of principal and interest. And you, you know, multiply that by twenty percent, right? So that means about a million over a million dollars of value over fifteen years. The USD three eighty eight. The key to the legislation is it's a, only effective for bonds approved by voters after July 1 of 2022, okay? So what that means is if we were to proceed tonight with passing that resolution and moving forward with the May 10th election, and this were to become, this fix were to become law, it would, it would not impact this district because it only impacts those districts who have the bond election approved by voters after July 1. Dustin, you might explain what the difference between us and Hayes is. Corey, can you say that again, please? You might explain the difference between us and the Hayes district. Ellis and between, Hayes. Between uh, Ellis and Hayes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that a yes? Okay. So, so, great question. So, so state aid is based upon what we call um, uh, property wealth. Okay, and, what, and the state of Kansas looks at property well uh, based upon what's called assessed valuation per pupil. Um, Hayes, for example, they, they are having a, a May 10th election as well. Um, they do not get any state aid, whether fixed or not. And the reason why they don't receive any state aid is because their assessed valuation per pupil is higher and they're considered a wealthy school district per that metric. But there are other districts like yourselves who are considered more property poor on a per pupil basis. And so therefore, if the state aid law is fixed, it would benefit your school district. Hey, hey Dustin, what uh, are there there isn't any chance for, okay, let's say we, we delay this after. There is no chance that Ellis climbs and passes that ladder of being in a district like Hayes and not being able to get that state aid. So Dustin, again, we talked about it earlier this afternoon. What would be your recommendation at this point in time as far as the resolution is concerned? So, so Corey, I think it's important to, to, I mean, obviously there's a financial implication, right? And so I, I do, I do want to maybe just visit a little bit about what that means to the district. Okay, so right now, based upon a $4 million $490,000 bond issue financed over 15 years, the mill levy increase is 10.75 mills. Okay? If, if this law is fixed, okay, and we decide to have an election after July 1 of 22, the mill levy would be two mills lower. Okay, so what this 20% means is about two mils to the district. So rather than being 10.75, it'd be 8.75 mils. 
And I'll give you another example. If if the bond amount was the original amount of six million five hundred and fifty thousand with the current state aid, which is zero percent over fifteen years, it's fifteen point five. With state aid it's with twelve point sorry, twelve point five if it's fixed. It's a, I mean, I would tell you financially, it's a meaningful enough amount where I think it's worthwhile for the district to, to, to consider this legislation um, and see how this plays out. Um, I know, again, it's a, it's a million dollars, million dollars is a million dollars, and it's meaningful from a tax perspective. Um, the challenge becomes, and, and you know, we've talked about maybe delaying this action for a week. Right until we knew more about the status of what this would look like. Um, the reality is, is in a week from now, we will know that it has been approved at a committee. We may not know if it's approved in the Senate. And then the challenge becomes it may be another week or two before we know if, if the House approves it. So, so the, really the question becomes is, does the district proceed tonight with the May 10th election? Uh, or do you consider looking at other options beyond July 1? And I would tell you that those options are probably going to be August 30th would be an option, which would also be a special election date. Um, or it could be held in conjunction with the August primary, which is August 3rd. Um, I would tell you that if you're looking at August 3rd, there may be potential for other statewide issues on the ballot at the same time. Um, there are other school districts who want to be after July 1 also, who are looking at an August 30th date. Yeah, we can run one in July. Dustin, you can't run a special election in July. Well, talk, he, he, I think you can, Dustin, but talk about the, what we talked about today. Uh, yes, yeah, so to answer that question, I think I heard the question, can we run a special election in July? The answer to that is yes. I think the, the challenge there is just the, the, um, the, the timing and the communication um, and just making sure that there's a plan in place. So obviously, a lot of people are... Um, you know, it's, it's harvest, it's uh, schools out, it's trying to, to make sure that people are engaged in, in, the, in, the, in the conversation about the project. In our conversation about the August 30th, we've still not been back in school very long, but you could work your message into the start of the school year and really push your message as you started your school year. <clears throat> Or the other option would be to go to November. I mean, then you could, you could then push to November, but that's a, that's a, I think there's a gubernatorial race in November, I think. And so, yeah. One thing we know, Dustin, and correct me if I'm wrong, if it doesn't make it out of committee by next week, if it doesn't make it out of committee, it's going to die. Correct? Can you hear me? Or freeze on me? Yeah. Um, if, if the question's for me, no, I cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? A little better, yes. If, if it doesn't make it out of committee, then we know it's going to die at that point in time, correct? Uh, yes. If it does not make it out of committee by Friday or Monday, um, it, it will not be correct. It will not, it will not go any further. That's correct. So ask when our deadline yeah, is to have yeah, a we should make, um, Based on my conversation late this afternoon, we will know whether it's out of committee by next Monday. And Jared just asked, and we talked about this a little bit, what's our timeline as far as if, if, if it dies and we want to go May still, when would we have to approve the resolution? Any 
you hear me? I, I, I cannot know. Uh, we said if it dies, and we want, still want to go to a May vote, when's, when's our deadline to do that? So, so I, I, I'm having a little hard time, but I think what you're saying, asking is, is if, if this does not make that a committee, can the board still convene early next week to proceed with a May 10th election? Yes. And the answer to that is yes, that is correct. You, we would have to meet in a special meeting sometime on Tuesday, uh, preferably actually in the morning or before lunch, Tuesday, um, so that'd be the 22nd, I believe. Yes. Um, in a special meeting to call the election, assuming that it is not make it out of the committee, we can still do that and have a May 10th election. Jared's shaking your head is probably a no-brainer, isn't it? Lovely. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, as soon as this gets out and the community finds out that we passed this resolution to move forward, and then they find out that all we, you know, delaying until July 1 save, saves us, a, you know, 20% on a bond, we get murdered. It's, a, it's the most responsible thing yeah. to pay for our community. There's no choice. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, either community or not, I mean, that's the right thing. Right decision. We, we just need to wait, and, and we can't pass up twenty potentially twenty percent. If it doesn't make it out next week, then we have a we have a board meeting and we pass this thing. Yeah. Yeah. So if you pass the resolution, it's going on the next election ballot. Um, okay. Can you pass a resolution with the understanding that Cindy's asking about if there's a time if you pass the resolution. Does that, does that mean we have to go the May 10th election? Um, I'm sorry, if you, you, you passed the resolution, I, I caught that. Do we have to go the May 10th election? Um, if, you, if you pass the resolution next Monday or Tuesday, you do not have to do May 10th. You can, you can pick whatever election day you want to have. Um, when you meet next Tuesday. So I think what you're saying is if, if it does pass out of committee, you obviously, it sounds like you want to wait until you know the outcome of that um, legislation before having your election. And so therefore, you could pick a date and pass that resolution next Tuesday for whatever date you prefer based upon if it gets out of committee or not. So if we pass it tonight, can we wait until August? She's asking if can we pass it tonight and wait till August to do a, a vote, call for a vote. Um, yes, you can. But like Letitia just said, do we do we put ourselves? I mean, I think we need to reconvene and have a discussion about the financials because twenty percent is going to make a huge difference. I'm concerned if we don't. I'm concerned about the backlash that we're going to catch for not having the gym on there and then asking the community to pony up money to build the gym outside of the lawn. Later. Later. So we ask, it, we ask them to pass this bond, and they pass it, and then we say, oh, by the way, now we want to build a gym. We have this money, but we don't have enough. It's a little bit like the weight room, a slap in the face to them. For me, I think it's smart to wait until Tuesday to at least know if it's coming out of committee. If it doesn't come out of committee, we have our answer. Yeah, if it, does, if it doesn't come out of committee, we, we come back next Tuesday and we pass what we're going to pass tonight and we just keep on trucking. And how does yeah. that solve the gym problem? It doesn't matter. Well, you can't put a gym, we've already determined you can't put a gym on this bond and pass it. Right, and I understand so that. So the gym is a non issue. So what? What Letitia is saying is if we can get saved by 20% and we find out that waiting until after July 1, we get 20% back from the state, then maybe we relook at our financials and see if we put the gym back on. So, yeah, I, I, don't, I wouldn't feel comfortable voting on financials tonight. I, I think we have to look to wait and see what's going on. I think, like Randy said, this has got to be responsible We'd be crazy, I think, to pass anything right at this point, you know, which is just one more, one more thing that can 
It's one more hurdle that it has the potential to be positive. Yeah, this, has a, this has the potential to be positive for our community. So yeah. timing is not great, but man, the financial ramifications are awesome. I mean, if, if, if that comes to fruition. Justin, can you talk a little bit about pre, just fill them in on pre-COVID where this discussion was going? Could you could you hear me that? Pre-COVID, where that discussion was going at the state level to fix the fix the bond state aid. Can you hear me? I, I can hear you now, Maria. Okay. Can you talk real briefly about where this was headed pre-COVID to try to fix this? Yeah. So, so um, 2020, um, this same bill to fix state aid um, went through the same process. It came out of committee. Um, it was approved out of committee, and the Senate voted. 40 to zero to pass it, to fix it. Um, that was literally three days before everything shut down. And at that point, nothing was done at the legislative level. So there's history here that based upon um, the leadership in the Senate Ed Committee and, and where current Senate leadership stands, that I I would say I feel cautiously optimistic that it will come out of committee and that it will get approved by the Senate. Where I think the challenge lies, and again, I'm not, this is speculation, right, but I think um, I would say that um, there's still a process, right, because that still has to go through the House. And I don't know, without having conversations with those in the House, I'm not sure where it would stand at this point in the House. But there, there is a precedent in the Senate for fixing the current law. Well, that was a good sign back then. Yeah, it was a positive sign back then. Very positive sign back then. I mean, look, Dustin and I, Craig had this conversation. We believe it comes out of both branches that the governor would sign it. She's been pretty supportive of education. Okay, Corey, can I, can I mention one more thing? You bet. The, so the, the only other option, which I think is, so I think option one is we just wait until we see what happens, that, what happens in committee, number one. And number two, again, just giving you alternatives would be is if you said tonight, yes, we're going to proceed with this project on May 10th. And if the, if the lunch, if it gets through the house, and which again I think the timing of getting through the house will probably be by the by March first. Okay. If if we know that it's a done deal by March first, you could always come back and change the election um, to a different date probably at least no later than March 1st. And the reason why I say that is because once you call your election, it sets forth a legal process with the county to conduct that election. Part of that process includes the county having to go through and, and prepare an order of ballots. Once that preparation of ballots and the ordering of ballots occurs, you've now incurred your cost for that election. Um, so there is a there is a drop dead date to cancel election, and it's just a matter of, of when the county would require that cancellation to occur before incurring the costs. And we don't know that date. Oh. Everybody, I guess I'm going to ask a question. Is everybody. I mean, to the point we, we probably just need to put the brakes on for a week and know that we, we may need, need to come back next Tuesday. And again, you know, like I said before, these are big decisions we're making, and this is a, this has big financial ramifications for our district. I, I, I know we don't like to meet all the time, but this is, I, I think I see everybody nodding their heads. Yep. Okay with it. It's a million dollar reason to wait. Yeah. Yep. 
Well, Dustin, and I know Craig's got some things he wants to share with us real quick as this discussion goes to, but Craig, or uh, Dustin, thank you. I Thanks, think Dustin. have any other questions for Dustin? Or? No. no. We'll, we'll be in touch, Dustin. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Craig, go ahead. <clears throat> so some of these are maybe not as important today since we're waiting for a week. But, so once once we do decide we're going to go for a bond, whenever that is, whether that's right now or whether it's coming up or whether it's down the road in August or whatever, you know, I, I know there's been a lot of talk about the bond campaign. And I just wanted to kind of touch briefly on that. And, and typically, a lot of times, we the, the pattern we see is that a district will will establish, a, it's about a 12 week time from the time they really start organizing their the bond campaign committee. And you guys, maybe the committee that's already started is a starting point for that, but it's kind of a little bit different function because you're really looking for a committee that has, typically we like to recommend a couple of co-chairs because, and, and that way they're not one person's taking on the responsibility. And those co-chairs typically don't want to be a Corey or really probably anybody from the board, probably. They, they're better off being just somebody from the community that is, that is in, of course, in support of the bond. And then, of course, after that, I'm just going to, I didn't bring anything to pass out tonight. I know you guys have plenty to talk about. So, but then on top of that, then there's also numerous committees that will be formed under the bond campaign committee. So just for example, there's voter registration, speakers bureau, speakers bureau, information central, community relations, count the end, targeting, and ways and means. And those, and then they, then you typically would like to have a chairman for each of those little subcommittees. And then, then you start to build your team from there. So each of those people start going out and trying to find people. Because there's, because really in order to pass a bond election, there's a lot of work. And you need as many numbers as you can get. So I think we can probably have a further discussion on that once we really decide when that bond is. But I know there's been talk about, you know, I, I, I'm afraid we're behind the curve. And I don't think that is, because really the informational campaign that goes out to the public starts typically eight to nine weeks before the bond act, before the bond election date. And part of the reason for that is you don't want to get it out there too soon because you give the potential, you know, opponents more time to put together their, you know, thoughts and processes to try to get people organized for that. Another thing we that we we haven't really talked about with the board, Corey and I just briefly discussed it, um, is going to be the delivery method for the for the design. Once the bond passes. You know, are you, you know, there's a couple ways to go about it. There's the, there's the traditional design, bid, and build where we would design the plans. We, along with you guys, would find five, six, seven, eight contractors, general contractors, give them the plans, give them the deadlines, and give the bids, and then they would come back. And then typically, a school board with with school with state money is required to take the low responsible bidder. But oftentimes that comes with some pitfalls because that low responsible bidder, even though we as architects and even you guys may know that the guy that has a low bid, you know, and this guy, we know he had problems here, there, and there, it's hard to ever really prove that, so you might be just taking what you get. So the, 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 more, the bigger thing that's occurring more and more nowadays is construction management at risk, which is where you actually hire a contractor similar to how you hired us. We would work with you to help solicit, to reach out to three, four, five, seven contractors have them submit a request for qualifications, then there would be a very short window of time, two or three days, where there would be a, a selected group that would review those and say, we want to bring in these three. And then those three would then submit a request for proposal, which then starts to put numbers to it, you know, what their fees would be, and those kind of things. And then, then from that, we would decide, if let's say you sent that out to five and you wanted to narrow it down to three to interview, we would bring those people in to interview. And we would be we would work with you throughout the entire process, sending out the information for the RFPs, RFPs, RFQs, and that typical timeline for that selection is about 60 days. That can be done in about 60 days because there's some, like with most things, there's there's deadlines. Things need to be done a certain amount of days before this and before that. And uh, oftentimes, like if you guys were going to go for a May vote, if you were going to do the construction management at risk and you wanted to have that contractor on board about the time the bond passed, you would be looking to start that process in March. Probably around, uh, I'd actually kind of just put some numbers to it, probably around March 14th, which I think is your next board meeting, is when you'd probably have to make that decision and we have the stuff put together and you'd send that out. And, and you know, Philip and I talked to Corey a little bit. There's, 
there's two ways to look at that. If you're going through that construction management at risk process, at the same time you're working toward the bond election, you know, it might, it, it's going to take some time from some people to be in those interviews, reviewing those documents, and there's sometimes concern that that may take the focus away from really focusing on the bond campaign itself. So, that, you know, you could also start that a little bit later and then bring those people on a little bit later in the, in the design. Because the one nice thing is, is they become a, a third leg in a team. You've got the owner, the architect, and the contractor once they're hired. And they would be hired by you. They're not hired by us. It's, it's a contract between you and them. And then, but whenever they do come on, if they come on early enough in the design process, as we're working through the schematic design, the design development, and then, and then you get to the end, they're doing budget estimating along the way to kind of confirm where where we think we were to begin with, and, and they also help us talk through materials and methods. And then at the end of that time, when they when we actually finalize the plans, we give it to them, and they go out and they do competitive bidding. They try to come back to you guys at the end of the bidding process time with at least two to three sub suppliers for every every trade in the in the project. And then they then they, they put together what they think is the best potential number for you. But they also bring all that information so you guys have some choices you can make. But at the end of that process, they give you what's called a guaranteed maximum price, which typically means that they guarantee this price unless a scope change is made by you or you know, there's some other factors in there. But it's typically a guaranteed price. There are some contingencies in there that help them absorb things as, as they go down the road. So anyway, I just want to bring those two things up because those are things that if that's a direction you, you think you might want to go, we need to be thinking about that probably relatively soon and so like, uh, I'm not going to need to make any decisions tonight I just wanted to kind of bring that information and uh, but I think everything's talked about tonight about the bond is very true I think you guys ought to wait for that week and kind of see what's going on that's huge this this kind of coming back and fixing this thing has been talked about for quite a few months but it's it's every time we keep talking to the people of the state there's been zero traction and that's and Corey and I even had even talked about it briefly but it was like there's nothing being said about it, so we didn't think it was happening. This stuff, it just popped back up, like like you said, late last week. So, anyway, is there any questions about, I know I went through that stuff real fast. Is there any questions about this? Yeah, I got a question on the time frame. You mentioned bond campaign, kind of the information putting out there eight to nine weeks prior to the election. Election, yeah. We have a May 10th election. Eight weeks is March 15th-ish? Yeah. 20th? Yeah. So we'd so, be... So we need one, so if we decide next week to do it, then the very the first thing we need to do is start getting the bond committee together. And like I said, if we, if we decide that date, I can bring some information back, and it'll kind of show you show you some of the typical things that are done at certain times. And, you know, and one of the, one of the big ones that you start off early on is fundraising, because there's a lot of things that you're going to be using during the bond campaign. Anything that's a vote yes thing cannot be paid for by school funds. Anything that's a purely informational thing, which you can put together a lot of pieces of paper that go out that, that purely tell facts. They don't have anything that says vote yes or not vote no. Those can be paid for out of the school funds, but the other things need to be paid for outside of that. So that's so fundraising needs to be happening pretty quickly. So, but but the, the, the biggest thing to probably be thinking about between now and then is who you think would be good for those two co-chairmen for that committee. You know, they want to be they want to be people that are, you know, well thought of in the community and influential because they're going to be out there kind of leading this charge. So that's something to be thinking about. And do you, does Alloy meet with us during that 12, yeah. or that 10 or 12 yeah. weeks prior to the bond? Yes. Yeah. We'll be kind of, we'll be kind of walking along with you through that process. I mean, you're going to be having, you know, it all depends on the committee. You'll be having meetings as you go along. We'll be coming to those. We'll be helping you put together some of the graphics you're going to be using to put out in the, in the community, there may be some 30, but that board we, that we made up when we were doing the public meetings, there may be something more like that. I mean, if you're actually, if, if you don't do the gym, there's really not as much to present graphically from a, you know, from a building standpoint, so it's more probably going to be informational. But if you were to, you know, if this were to happen and the gymnasium were to go back on, that would be a graphic, you know, the, the, the layout of the school where the gym was. And then also just informational flyers and those kind of things will be helping to put together. Question on the construction manager risk when that contractor, that construction manager brings back those two or three or four subs. Because of that methodology we're using, we can choose, we don't necessarily have to choose the lowest bid from that. From no. that. 
you know, um, so what they'll do is they'll typically come back with, with what they, after they've reviewed all the numbers and vetted a lot of those people out, you know, they work with a lot of, a lot of them, they'll typically come back with what they're recommending as our, our best price to you. But they're, they're also going to, it's, you know, one thing nice about it is it's open book. So the guaranteed maximum price is also the nice thing is if the project goes really, really well, there's more often than not as the job goes along and gets closer, further down the road and progresses, there's oftentimes money that the contractor starts to give back because it's been money that's been held in reserve for contingencies, things unknown. But as those as those hurdles get passed, there's oftentimes they say, hey, we're we're fifty percent done, we're gonna reduce our contingency by half. And that's your money. So they give it back. So that's also things you guys can use to pay for other things that might have been talked about that might not have been directly called out the bond. But you do have some choices to make. I mean if it comes back and here's four just for that example, here's four landscapers. You might say, hey, this guy lives in Ellis. We'd like to use him and his numbers a little bit higher. Just keep in mind, your budget numbers, your, your final bid price could, could go up or down, too, on that. Yes. So I know you do a lot of work with Dana Cunningham. Yeah. Um, so I was in his office last week, and he said the only, the only thing that he ever likes is uh, design, bid, build. Uh, you know, and he went through his reasons of why, they, why he uses it. And I know you guys work, do a lot of work for him as well. Um, so I think when it comes time, I think I'm going to want to hear some some substance on both areas because he, you know, you know, if he were up here right now and he's got he's our architect at, at Fort Hays State or our our head facilities guy, and uh, he'll he'll put the same pitch out there that that you just did for the construction uh, management risk management CRM for design bid build he'll say this is why you want to do this so I definitely at that time I know you guys do both because I know you do work for Dana yeah. I know that at I mean, that point yeah we'll, and I know we'll that they just got some. done doing a project there that we designed for them that the, con and they, the contractor was the low lowest qualified bidder yeah and I think if you ask Dana about that he'll probably tell you he had a lot well, of sleep this night it went back in time out. yeah so, so yeah that's, so that, there, that's that is some of the negatives I mean the nice thing is, is if you do the CMAR and like I said we're gonna we're designing the plans but no matter which direction you go on the delivery method. Yeah. I mean, we're going to do the same thing, but, but uh, you know, you're basically getting a chance to meet these people, like you met us, and interviewing them, and kind of oftentimes, and they actually, when they come to that interview, they typically bring the team. You know, who's going to be the project manager in the office, who's going to be the site superintendent in the field, so you actually get a chance to meet them and, and feel like, and sometimes I've had them come down to choices where I like those people better than those people, even though their fee might have been slightly higher. Thank you, well, Mike. I, I will tell. Yeah, I I told. I felt bad because I we talked about this late this afternoon. And we figured that we'd probably put the brakes on this for a week. So thanks, Greg, for driving out. And but we talked about too. Next time he might join us Zoom. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you guys reconvene next week, I'm gonna just spot. Yeah. You don't need to be in person. We like seeing you, but. We'll figure out that. But but we, we didn't have that problem last time. Right? There's got to be something set with that microphone that was different yeah. this time because yeah, well, getting that set up a little better would be great. I think yeah. it, it should, the microphone should be going through the webcam, and I think it's going through the computer. Yeah, so that's what. And, and, <clears throat> and so needs to be switched. I don't know. Better. External microphone. Uh, usually the webcam up on top. So kind of the microphone have a is much better. Uh, table is mm -hmm. computer. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you, Craig. So. Back to the consideration of the resolution, I think it's prudent that we table at this point, based on what we heard from Craig and from uh, Justin. You gotta realize this is so hard <laughs> to push it down the road one more time. <laughs> we don't have choices. Yeah. So we do uh, uh, probably need to get a motion to table it at this point. To Reconsider in the near future. Uh, so I'll make a motion to table the consideration of the board resolution for the district of Bond Okay. Got a motion from Dean, a second from Brian to um, table the decision on the uh, consideration of the board resolution for the bond election. Other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7 0.
back to discussion. So, so as soon as you find out? As soon as I, I will stay in touch with Dustin, and I'll keep you updated on what information I'm getting back from him. As soon as I get set from him, literally this whole thing, what time? We, we met at 2 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, will we need in person for that meeting, or is that something we can do by Zoom? Uh, we could, I mean, we could, we could do either or both. I mean, if people needed to, to do something by Zoom, we could set it up to do it by Zoom. So it's we could set it. It's a big vote. I'll make sure I take off a of work to try to get here for that. Yeah. It's a big thing. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Thanks, Greg. Okay. Uh, next action item. Uh, consideration of the school calendar for 2022-2023. You remember I brought two last time. I would make the recommendation we approve B. If you looked at what I noted there, the staff did vote. We had three in favor of A and 25 in favor of B. And B is one we talked about pushes the graduation, well, it pushes our start date back a week, pushes graduation back a week, so we can do it back to us, move it back to a Sunday. Saturday. Saturday, sorry. Saturday, thank you. Make a motion to approve the 2022-2023 calendar B as presented. Second. Got a motion by Jared and a second by Cindy to approve the uh, uh, option B for the calendar for the 2022-2023 school year. Other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. The consideration of temporary remote learning in excess of 40 hours that we are required to be looked at every month. I was looking at this getting concerned because I'm on the public side that I pulled up and there's no attachment. It's not public knowledge. Not public. So it is attached on, on your guys' side. So uh, we look for the recommendation to approve that again this month. And thank Donna for keeping it up today. I would move to approve the attached list of students for temporary remote learning in excess of 40 hours as presented. Second. Motion by Randy, second by Jerry to Jared to approve the attached list for students for temporary remote learning in excess of 40 hours. Other comments? Thank you, Donna. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Uh, next action item consideration of staff recommendation. Resignation. No, I said no recommendation. Resignation. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, you say potato, I say potato. It's getting a little late. I'm still thinking about that bond deal. Uh, so, uh, looking for a motion to approve the uh, resignation of Sarah Thompson. I'll make a motion to approve the resignation of Sarah Thompson as the HSELA teacher. Thank you. Got a motion by uh, Brian, second by Cindy. To approve the uh, resignation of Sarah Thompson. Uh, <laughs> oh, I thought it was Cindy. Sorry. Well, <laughs> Dean was also <laughs> talking, so he's going to pass his second by the tissue. Way past his bedtime. <laughs> to approve the resignation of Sarah Thompson as the HS ELA teacher. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Uh, consideration of the first reading of board policy updates. I want to thank Randy and Cindy for looking it over. Actually, Cindy and I had a conversation about one today, so I want to thank her for doing that. Um, we, we got presented at the first board meeting, do a first read, and then we want to actually become official until after next month when we did a second read. Official policy. I'm sure Marty read them all. Yep. I actually did. It was a little slow to pick up. I just have a question. It says with comments. Um, I don't have comments in mine. Am I the only one that's not seeing the comments? I mean, it's, it's just a gray box. Uh, on the side. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get that updated. I mean, I read through them, but I don't know what the comments are. So yeah, I'll, I'll get that updated. Because I think that I think it changed when I saved it over to a PDF. I think in the Word it showed up all the comments. I think that's yeah. why it was so long. I don't know. You read it. What you think? Yeah. It was like, it's good. No, actually, I did. <laughs> I'll make sure that I just put the Word document on there next month. Okay. I'll tell you, if you don't see that, you make sure to remind me that the Word document is on there. 
So that's just the first reading, no um, action needed on that at this point. Uh, consideration of supplemental positions. See the motion there to approve Courtney Maska as one of our assistant junior senior high school track coaches and Jody McCarty as the assistant high school softball coach for this year. She's, Courtney didn't want head coach because we're still looking for head, right? Head in both programs. And what happens if we don't find a head coach? No. <laughs> we, we've got enough coaches in my house, though. Thank you. <laughs> Where's Trump trying to shake the shake the bushes? And she has no interest. She just she just wants us to stop. Yeah. I think she at one point I thought about it, but I think just stepping into that role, you know, she doesn't feel like she would you know, have a, know enough about our system to take over right away. So we still need a head track base. coach and a base and baseball. A couple leads on that. Derek's interviewed a person. They were trying to work out details. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve Courtney Masca as the assistant junior senior high school track coach and Jody McCarty as an assistant high school softball coach for 2021-2022 school year. Second. Motion by Jared, second by Ryan to approve uh, Courtney Masca as an assistant junior senior high school track coach and Jody McCarty as an assistant high school softball coach for the 2021-2022 school year. Other discussion? Are all assistant coaches on a year-by-year -year basis? Yes. Yeah. All coaches. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. And consideration of resignation of supplemental staff. Looks like Mr. Gasper has submitted his resignation as VHS play director. And grade uh, school, junior high, they're both doing that as a student. Make the motion to accept the resignation of Bill Gasper as the EHS play director in Washington Grade School, junior high year 20. Second. Motion by Brian, second by Cindy to uh, accept the Mr. Gasper's resignation as the EHS play director in grade school, junior high year 20. Other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Consideration disposal of surplus materials. I'll just make a note real, real quick. Steve did try to <clears> work <throat> with trying to find a vendor uh, to buy those, but with them being over 10 years old, and it, especially at that low quantity, too, it's not like there were 150 of them, uh, that there was no interest. So his plan is to part it out, save the parts he can save, and dispose of the rest. Can't be anything good. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. I mean, it surprises me that we have to approve getting rid of computers that are 10 years old. Yeah. Uh, so moved. Second. Motion by Jared, second by Marty to uh, approve the disposal of the USB 38 desktop computers. 15 up. All in favor? Opposed? Yeah, trade 7 0. Well, I mean, technically, you could have a textbook that's been sitting on the shelf for 30 years, and really, you guys should make a code. Motion to dispose of it before it goes to the trash. So, textbook still, <laughs> still got stuff inside it. You'd be surprised what that 10 year old computer can actually do. Final action item is probably the best one. Consideration to suspend the mitigation strategies from the least to most restrictive code plan. And then, with, with the idea that we basically move to the uh, this. Basically, it's the flu plan for COVID. I mean, it's basically an identical plan. Um, and the Hayes District did it. I did have a question from board member. I appreciate this all ahead of time. Uh, Jason and Dr. Harris were on board, was suspended it. And really, the reason, the thought behind the suspension of it is if we would ever see a big outbreak again, we can move to reinstate it if we felt like we needed to do that at that point. So it's not totally gone. Gone. It'd be there for us as a as a backup, but right now, to uh, yeah, just 
it still has a sunset. Uh, we still has a sunset at the end of the school, school year. year. Yeah. So, so we've got you you put two attachments on it. The second one just shows what our current plan is. Is that what you were? This guideline right here. Yeah. The, well, the other one, yeah, the other one is our current plan that we right. would be suspending. That. Right. I didn't look at that. Yeah. I was like, oh, it looks like what we got right now. Yeah. So th this okay. right here is our exact plan as okay. it stands today. Yeah. Now, as I say, as it stands today, because we we took a, a basically a month long reprieve on the uh, contact tracing based on what came out from the state. But that month long pretty on that's about over. And we do not require the test, it's just that the doctor requires a test on COVID or flu or whatever, correct? I mean, we're not saying they have to go get tested. Well, if they were exhibiting symptoms, we'd say you need to be symptom free before you came back or be tested. Because if you had symptoms and you got tested and you weren't positive, then that's one thing. But if you keep experiencing symptoms, we wouldn't do anything different than that even with flu. I mean, how, how, do, how is this from pre-COVID? This, do they this require is exactly, you to go get tested? This is exactly what we were doing pre-COVID as far as influenza was concerned. Okay. That was my question. So we just need a motion to suspend, suspend the plan and we'll follow the, our guidelines. That will be basically the influence of guidelines of the past COVID as well. I move to suspend the mitigation strategies from least to most restrictive COVID plan and adopting the school isolation and quarantine guidelines as presented. Second. Motion by Letitia, second by Cindy to uh, suspend the mitigation strategies from least to most restrictive COVID plan and to adopt the school isolation and quarantine guidelines as presented. Other discussion? Do we need to amend it to put on there the numbers John for that? Because it, it, it'll just be, it, okay. I'll communicate with you if we start to see a problem. I'll, I'll probably continue to send out weekly updates and just where we're at, just so people know what's going on with the system. Okay, bring it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> 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 You've been waiting to do that all day. <laughs> That count as another vote as 8 0. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, got an extra half of both of those. Carries 7 0. Uh, discussion items, uh, enrollment and budget. Okay, I'll go quick. Since we're, we're pushing time. I promise. I promise. I'm about budget. Budget. Okay, so I went over this with CCC and I went over this with staff today. I wish this was positive, fuzzy, break news, but it, it's kind of some tough news because it's realistic to where we're at. People have to understand it. Right now, uh, if you look at this this chart, this is base state aid for people. We are getting 4706 this year from the state. Based on the last lawsuit, it's set to go to 48, 46 next year. I don't see that changing. That's going to that's going to happen. I'd say that's going to happen. That's positive for us. Okay, so that's that's a good thing. Now you would read in here after the 22-23 school year, it's supposed to be based on the consumer price index. We know that could make a significant jump potentially for that following year. Things superintendents are scared about is if the lawsuit gets dropped or it gets settled and, and they back off of it on what happens when that year comes out, if there won't be a push, if, if it's very conservative in Topeka to uh, try to not do that. That would be the case that would start to be a pretty negative impact on us. We got back to where we had kind of flat state aid each year that that would that would hurt us so you just got to realize that going in now the other and again this is not great information but it's it's just the information okay so we're working off of 403 this year because we can go back one year or two years for our state aid so in september of 19 we had 403 students when we did our audit with the state when they came in and audited our numbers so next year that means our best number we're going to work with is 375 so we're going to have a drop from 403 to 375. When I've looked at, looked at that in the past, I'm going to guess that's going to be around a $50,000 drop. Even though we're having an increase in the base state aid, we're going to have a drop because of that drop in student numbers. And you can see, though, what happens in the following year, too, our SO66, and that's an unaudited number. That hasn't been audited yet, but that's what we, we sent up to the state for this year. Was 345. So we're going to have another significant drop 
the following year in that budget. So it, that will start to create some some budget issues as, as far as just general operating expenses uh, because we will not have as much coming from the state over the next couple of years. Now, we also talked about not having in here. There is ESSER dollars that we've been using, and that's been wonderful and great. So we had ESSER 1, ESSER 2, ESSER 3. We spent our ESSER 1 money. Uh, we had about 180000 in ESSER 2 money. We spent, uh, we haven't spent it all yet because we're spending it through the year, but we'd already requested 105 of that. It was 55000 in textbooks, $50,000 towards continuing smaller class size splits. That's what we've used that for so far. So it, $75,000 left in that. Um, the high school right now, junior senior high school, is looking at math text, just like we did with junior high. I would picture writing another big chunk of that for math text books to try to bring them up to date and then start to look at some other class splits. We got about $419,000 in ESSER 3 money, which there are a lot more hoops to jump through. We're just going to have to jump through them though to get it in ESSER 3 money. That, again, we're going to have to look probably to um, do some staffing things with as we move forward. That sunsets out, though, in 2024. So that's another thing we've been talking about is a superintendent group, and especially a little bit concerning for us general budget-wise, is because we'll take drops general fund-wise next <coughs> year. We'll have this supplement, but that year that that ESSER dollars, those ESSER dollars go away, that can, that would be a tough year that we're going to have to plan for. So just I just want to, to want to be honest with everybody about that year and tough future. So you know, and this is why, uh, but this is one thing I uh, expressed to the staff today because we're having this conversation about the bond. The things we have on the bond, I think it's important people understand that heating and air conditioning system at grade school. It doesn't matter if you've got classes of. 30 going through there or classes of 15 going through there. You have to have a heating and air conditioning system. Same thing holds true for like the science rooms up here. You have to have adequate science rooms. It doesn't matter if we're going to graduate 45 kids or we're going to graduate 30 kids out of high school. We've got to have adequate science rooms. So as we have those discussions, if you hear that, well, yeah, we are dropping enrollment bonds. So I think the things we're looking on at with our bond we got to have those things no matter what our enrollment is. I also told the staff today, keep encouraging. Any, anytime you can be involved in a discussion about trying to get the housing project going, which I know a lot of you are involved in that, to try to promote that within the community. Because honestly, I do think that can help us out of the school system. But that won't be instantaneous help. That will take time for that to develop. So. Started in 2024, then right. maybe, we, maybe we pick up 20 students. Curious on the, the math on that. I'm looking at 28, you know, that 28 kid reduction. You take that times the base state aid, that's a lot more than 50,000. Yeah, but, but we're also, we're, there's some weightings in there, and we're also going up in the base state aid. We'll, we'll have another 100 and something in state aid compared to what we had this year. They usually run those. I was just looking at the numbers. Right, that 4,800. You're going to lose 28 kids. That's yeah. The the full uh, 78,518 bucks. The the uh, we'll get preliminary runs from the state, state, state probably in the next month, and we'll know for sure. But we'll know more for sure where we're at. Yeah. But right. this got to be up front, everybody. I mean, that's what the number is, and that will have the negative effect on us budget wise as we move forward. Got to be fair. Honest with that. Okay, that was fairly quick. Not real quick, fairly quick. Okay. Uh, looking at uh, next item on the agenda, the um, executive session for discussion of personal matters, uh, non elected personnel, just uh, to consider uh, administrative contracts. I have now 15 minutes, so you guys can adjust it however you want to adjust it. So. Any 15? Any 30? Any 10? <laughs> Let's start with 10. Unless you guys think you're going to have lots of questions. Okay, with 10? 10 okay, look for a motion. I'll make a motion to go into the executive session to discuss the legal and police evaluation. 
pursuant to model and personal exception under KLA and inviting Mr. Burton. And I'm hoping the public meeting will resume in 10 minutes. 9.15. I'll second it. A motion by Dean and second by Marty to go to executive session to discuss individual employee evaluation pursuant to the model and personnel exemption under KLA. Inviting Mr. Burton and the open meeting will come back in at 9.15. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Okay. We're back in open session. Um, consideration of the administrator contract. Um, typically they're on a two-year uh, contract, and so we look for a motion from uh, the board. I was thinking before I spoke. <laughs> we didn't get to that part. And so, but it, it's not, we're not trying to scare you. <laughs> I realize that was okay. awesome. Hey. Like, Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I know that we offer contract extensions for Mr. Bur Burton's superintendent contract and for Mr. Buffert's and Ms. Schmidt's building administrator contracts. I'll second. Got a motion from Cindy and a second from Brian to um, consider contract extension, offer contract extension to Mr. Burton uh, as a superintendent and Mr. Bufford and Mrs. Schmidt as building administrator. Other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Oh, you guys can read. Oh, you can I probably the core usually tells us to go home at that time. I said he forgot this year. <laughs> Maybe he didn't forget. Yeah, yeah. He didn't want to have to text us. So, the walk of shame coming in. Like, what are you getting? Okay. Next month, Monday, 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 uh, next month, uh, curriculum corner, like I said, uh, SPED department, come over and talk about the Russell edition. Wait, wait, wait. Isn't this the one where we do the tour? March. March. Usually, usually, usually is March. Typically we have, and we did it last year. So I'd love to do that again this year. Is that going to interfere with the agenda that you have in place, or what you have recommended? No. I mean, we need to do it. We Thank need you. to do the tour because we just haven't been able to. We haven't done for two years, have we? Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, it's been two years. No. No, we, I think no, we, we did. We, we did it. To, we we did it in March of 20. Yes. Sure. That was my first it. year on yeah. and we did it. Mm -hmm. so we didn't do it 20 more. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to change it on my behalf, but I will not be here for the March meeting. I was out of town for a conference in March. So. Yeah. If you wanted to wait till April, I'd be fine with that, but don't. Don't change it on my behalf. It messes up. Can you come to the evening meeting? No, I would be out of town. Is that the Monday? Monday so. said, yeah, it's usually Monday. Just have Monday or all week. I'll we'll have to yeah. look to see what we approved. Because last Monday. year we did it at, in the night, but I think we changed it because we didn't do building tours. Right. right. Yes. It was usually morning meeting. Morning meeting. So the 14th, so we usually do it, is it usually during spring break? Is that what we do it? Last, last year we though. did. We had an evening meeting last year because I, well, I remember doing it by Zoom. Let me see. I remember doing it by Zoom because there was no more that's why I Zoom did those students. Right. But I'm just saying this year it would be, so that's what I'm asking. How about the week before, Brian? That's your story. The week before, I would be fine. So I mean, don't Don't change it on my behalf. Well, or meet the week of the 7th. Because we did the 14th this spring break. Right. But I think on the calendar it has it. That's what, what did we do? What did we approve? So this is March 7th. March 7th is the board meeting. Yeah. Okay. And it's 7 a.m. The 7th is one. Yeah, sorry. 7th is one. March 7th, 7 a.m. You're going to make that then? The 7th is one. I'm sorry. I was confused on that. Last year we got it all messed up because we didn't do the tours. I, 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 could, I could just meet with you sometime and 
sure. go through the tour or something like that too, rather than changing a complete meeting or something like that. I'd be glad I, I'd be willing to come in. Yeah, I could just get with how, you individually. How long do, do, I just need, I, I'll have to see off work, so I just need to make sure I... Well, typically we try to get around, I mean, we have our meeting in here first to go through our general business, and then we get out and tour and jump into some classrooms and see some things going on, so it's, it's not long. We're not, we're not looking at a long. But you probably, yeah, I mean, I think the type of thing where we actually meet around 7, isn't it? When it's yeah, 7, it's 7 a.m. So even if you, even if you had to get back to work, probably just the tour. But I I was thinking we're back on, our, on the road, back to work by 9. And I was thinking 20, 20, 30 minutes at each building. Two years ago, it was a long time. Gender, we pretty yeah. high on the floor. We're to have, well, Yeah, I'll get it. Yeah. Here. I still have to get that one. Oh, okay. 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 Okay.